we interrupt this program to bring you Courage the Cowardly Dog Show, starring Courage the Cowardly Dog, abandoned as a pup. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very excited. I have a very special guest uh, with us here, Bracted and other people that have joined the podcast. We grew up with Cartoon Network, and we grew up with a lot of the cartoons there, and the animators and the creators of, of so many of them. And today we have one of those, Courage the Cowardly Dog. He also did their, uh, what was it, the Dirty Birdie? What was that one? It was one that you created as well. Um, Right, I have. I did make the Dirty Birdie. I have made a lot of many short films. So we have. Um, we're honored. Um, it is. We are honored to have John in our presence, and he's going to be talking to us a lot about his his how he sees the world to get me, and his success story. Uh, you know, inspiring others to to blaze their own trail as well. You know, in the world, maybe not, to blaze their own trail as well in the world, in their own way. Um, you can take it anywhere that you'd like, you know, um, you know, what are challenges, I guess, growing up that inspired you, you get me, to to just really pursue animation as a career and have the confidence to really put out your ideas and to, because I've, I've gone through your YouTube a little bit as well, and I mean, just your mind, you get me, the, the way that you're able to see the world and add so much joy and value, and, and you're very good at what you do. Is there a question? I would... Yes. Um, what is the question? Maybe let's start off simple and then we could proceed to heavier stuff if we get there. Okay. Um, what are what are things in life you get me that even till today have inspired you to keep on going? I know Vincent Van Gogh is an inspiration of yours. Uh, Charlie a Chaplin, I believe that one as well, right? Yeah, they are um, some aesthetically wonderful qualities in these artists and many other artists that uh, I have stolen from or have deliberately received their goods as uh, some certain generations and generations have. So this is nothing new. But the idea of being informed, what are the conditions of being informed by something not done by you. What do you think those would be? What does an individual need to possess, right? To be open to the information that's already out there that will help them with what they want to achieve. What do you think are these qualities? Let's just say, let's, let's try to name three. Maybe they're not three. What do you think, Noel? They have to have... The, I, I believe everybody inside has something that they want to share with the world. So to use that and to not be afraid of the criticism of the outside, because you're going to get... Okay, so you're to... saying confidence, self-confidence. Okay. Right? But self-confidence is not going to make you open to receive uh, information from other sources. I would think it would be a natural curiosity and a curiosity right to explore. Not so much with a goal in mind, because I think that would mean you're kind of putting up, you know, obstacles to experience. So curiosity, what about an elastic mind one that could expand not just from one's own perceptions inherited from childhood and from culture etc etc but i think it's directly related to curiosity what's another one um curiosity and the i, I like adventure a lot and and the persistence and i, I like failure because i believe through failure you get better can hone your skills, your craft. Your, your... Well, you're asking, you're, you just make it sound like you're saying, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yes. Right? And in that, I would think goes along with self forgiveness, right? So, how do we become informed? I mean, I was not the problem with me. I mean, I can't be used as a model for anything. In fact, I would be the model what not to do. 
But for me, I was it was already built in. I'm like a turtle that was born on the beach and hatched, and I just knew to run to the, sh the ocean. And what do you do with films after you make them? You want, you want to present them to an audience. And how do you get your art to the world is another topic that um, we could explore. But for me, it was rather easy because film festivals all over the world are looking for films. So you could say, um, where, where would you bring your talents? No, I, we're not talking to animators here. You are a business person, right? And your your crowd is mostly made business. A combination of everything. Like, it's just, I I I I guess I could be like a vlogger online, but I, I do I, I am more like business savvy, um, uh, essentially. But well, anybody that wants to chase you. your dreams, essentially, like I I like the dreamers. I like the misfits. I, I like the I like the outcasts. And and I and, and I consider myself one of those, the black sheep. Um, Why do we have to play these roles? We didn't make the. I don't know what a black. Sheep, what? We either do the thing we love, or we don't. We don't have to be a misfit or a black sheep or anything that a structured society says we are. You do what you're compelled to do, what you love. If you don't have anything to love. I've learned that you could explore 
the things that brought you brought you the most joy in childhood if it was building blocks or painting or paint uh, dyeing mice and selling them i don't know you could look there the thing is not to have an interest in life is alien to me because i've always been motivated by um cartoon humor and the cartoon animation history which i consider my mythology i see the world as a cartoon and it's vastly under uh understood misunderstood i should say it sounds like an insult but it really isn't it's for me an honor if i were to encounter somebody that reminded me of a cartoon that would be an aesthetic praise but society believes that animation or cartoons are for children and you're insulting them. well i am i can't help that but my mythology is that at any time we could discover novelty in an absurd way and that all things are alive with the potentiality of humor and even the most grave situations can be seen and survived with a, just a little bit of sense of perspective and humor um i was caught i was caught planning my destiny on a ferry going to a beach and i was just sitting i was laying down looking up at the sky it was blue sky middle of the day noon and as i was planning my destiny the crescent moon appeared i didn't notice it before but it was there and suddenly i felt myself being laughed at that here i am john dilworth determining his own destiny and the moon just said to me oh yes please john tell me more what is your destiny the moon <laughs> i just started cracking up and stopped trying to determine my destiny i just resumed living i'm going to need your help noel okay so i have tons of questions by the way i, mean, I hope so let's get to them okay so what would you share our um uh, in in a lot of the fame that you were able to obtain what were things that you didn't like about that because you're you know they they had made a movie i know you had no involvement with it whatsoever it was the scooby doo one that came out recently i i don't i don't i, don't, I had no and then what were some of your biggest challenges you get me that that like towards you get me like cuz you you shared earlier on that you you ended up receiving fame and then that's not what you wanted afterwards you found out that that's not what you wanted so can like what are some of the reasons why you get me i guess that you didn't want that like once afterwards you you know impacted like people throughout the entire world essentially right but that's not fame the impact people around the world as you say is contact it's um my it was i simply made cartoons the way i always make cartoons i make them for myself but there is a component of a well in this case because of the context we're making a cartoon show it's supposed to be on a, a channel for kids right so i would consider myself a 10 year old secret 10 year old and it comes natural so i simply just made cartoons about scenes that were very human in nature that to me resonated the dramas of humanity and the formula was really quite easy horror comedy um i've spoken of this many times uh, i'm i'm a big fan of horror but not gore horror and um and laughter i had a big family there were five of us and we were very very close and we all share this rather absurd improvisational humor about life not that we don't take it hard we do which is one of the strange contradictions of 
animation to make funny pictures that make people laugh can be done while you're melancholic, let's say. Not as a rule, but I'm saying you know, the makers of humor, right, are human. And, you know, and the idea of pity is what I was pushing. And always this in my films. Many films I make are not very successful. They tend to be experimental. So regarding the commercial stuff, the commercial stuff is rather easier because of our mandate. Our mandate is we have to deliver product. And doing that makes planning and responsibility because I'm responsible for my network's budget, their money, their reputation. It's a big deal. And I remember not being overwhelmed by the idea of producing a series, but wanting to come up with a formula in which to produce it. And that formula was to accept 70% from others of what I would do, and that would be okay. And that's how we produced the show. If I expected 100% of what I would do from everyone, we would have big problems. We'd deliver on time, we'd go over budget, we'd have problems, right? I don't know if I answered your question. I'm not even sure there was a question. Forgive me, Noah. I'm excited to be able to learn from you, essentially. What about your new <laughs> what film? What am I saying? <laughs> I, I want to talk about your, your mind, the way that you see life as a cartoon, because um, of just, like, just how the world is and how other people try to put frames on everything and then to deframe everything, to detach yourself from it and just kind of see it from like, the outside, from your perspective. And I want to talk about your new film, by the way. That's coming out. The, the how? Uh, how have you? You love me? How? What, what was it specifically? I mean, how that you love me? Very familiar with courage. It's one of the new ones coming out. The who? Mm -hmm. Let's see. How have you loved me? The new film, and then yes. the the mind. How how you're able to just kind of not put yourself in any kind of like a box, and how you're able to just see life itself. You get me the way that you see it, like with your creative I don't genius. know that I'm not in a box. I don't know that. I mean, a lot of times I'm confused about life as anyone else I would encounter. Would that be a box? I don't know what a box is. I mean, you mean limitations, limiting yourself? Do we limit ourselves? I think once, I, I don't want to say yes or no because I, I believe you could always overcome that. It's like gla sh shattering like a glass ceiling. Yes, you can. But do you realize what it takes to overcome anything? Do you, do you realize the will and the intention and the resources that require to get over even the smallest obsession or fetish? There should be classes in this. That's the other thing in education. What exactly are we learning in the real world? For instance, there was a documentary about an educator, high school educator in New York City who quit after 35 years. He was just frustrated. And he made a documentary about uh, the institution you went to and others like it. And there was a class he learned called politeness. That was class. Did you have a class like that, politeness? But right, I have but to, I've read a lot of books on like politeness, you get me like Dale Carnegie, how to win friends, you get me influence people, or other things you get me like think and grow rich, or just stuff that, about the other person. Yeah, I'm not talking about that. I'm yeah. talking about just general politeness, a class in that, how to be polite, and the, and the principle behind politeness is you can't get what you want in life if you don't make friends with everyone including your enemies and that's a wow. craft and ever you see these global business and political leaders getting together on one stage and they all look like they are the best of friends and they probably are in a superficial way because they all took a class in politeness 
So going back to you, are we in a box? I don't know if I'm in a box or not. I hope I'm not in a box. But I'm very vigilant to be aware if there are limitations I'm putting on myself. Let's say certain beliefs, certain behaviors that are constructed, not my own, unconscious stuff, right? Isn't success really happiness? The joy in doing something that brings you pleasure? Is it about money? Is it about amassing wealth? And with that wealth, the growing apathy of what next? Isn't it just good to be successful where you feel there is more for you to give than to receive? Yeah, success is an interesting invention. You don't want to be without resources. And if there are loved ones that are relying on you, you would need to thrive. I think thriving is a better word than success. And I really think it's about the happiness, the quality of your life. If you are a big baron and you just got to chomp, 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 you got to take over, you got to be number one dog. I mean, okay, that's your happiness. Um, but it sounds a little sociopathic to me. Um, yeah. I'm just content to be able to do the little things that, I, that bring me joy and, uh, and to stay healthy in my spirit, in my body, and in my duty to others, whatever that may be. And each one will know themselves. So that would be success. That's a definition for me. Animation, hmm, that's really hard. You're I've made some job. films that have been so disappointing to me, my expectations, irrational. And uh, I wasn't prepared for the reality of the outcome. And I would despair. And that's how much I'm invested in it. And then I think about maybe I'm holding on too tight. Right? So the thing you love to do, you have to keep an eye on that so that it doesn't love you too much and you lose sense of who you are and where you are in context. So <laughs> with how if you love me, I really am just taking a kind of a relaxed way of producing it. Also, fundraising has been very difficult, as it always is with filmmaking. And um, I think that I'm enjoying the production a little bit more because I'm not inventing an outcome that does not exist. What is the film um, about a little bit? Because I, I, I saw a little bit on YouTube where like I saw like a girl and a guy and they were holding like a puppy. Um, uh, it's simply a love story told again through the genres of horror and comedy. So it's a romance, it's a rom, it's a horror rom com. Ha 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 ha! That's what it is. And uh, I'm just having fun with it. It's ultimately the story of a man who makes an irreversible decision in life. For love. But he makes that decision willingly. What are other things, I guess, that in life yourself that when you were able to get an animation, did you ever get frustrated originally, like you were younger, maybe on a cartoon because you were hard on yourself? But you always knew that you... When did you realize that you were a genius, actually, I guess, creatively, with, with your films? You may oh, not I even object. consider yourself one, you get me? Yeah, I like, object. That's absurd. A being That's absurd. one. I or other am... people seeing you like that. 
Yeah, that you could say that that's a societal defect to want to seek geniuses, right? When each one of us is a light. And if you want to believe in geniuses, then I want to believe we are all geniuses. Some may have done more things than others. Some have been fortunate to receive the boons of their efforts. But I'd like to see then if we're, if one is a genius, we're all geniuses, okay? That's equality. That's equality. That's real equality. Where we're all alike and we all share in the boon of living, of life, without constraints. If you look back at child behavior, and my God, has there been a lot of development and study into child behavior, it's proven. Collaboration yields happiness, yields joy, not constraint. When you have no choice, when you're told what to do, guess what happens? A inner child, that tiny little innocent child, loses itself because now it's just an obedient thing agreeing with what it's being told by mommy or daddy and that's not a society that's not a civil what kind of civilization is that of complacence complacency of obedience i don't know I don't know, I think in the art world or in any profession, I would think it would be the dynamic asking of questions, questions, question everything. We talked about curiosity. We talked about the elastic mind. We talked about motivation. And the thing is, is that what would benefit all? I didn't make cartoons to talk to 10 year olds. I talk to as many people, human beings as possible, that all feel, that have the capacity to feel. How was it like when you were, when you used to work at Cartoon Network, like when you were younger? I never worked for Cartoon Network. They were a client of mine. I always had stretched films. Wow. How was that like, you get me, like going through that process? And, I encourage and, and everybody courage. to have their own business. I encourage everyone to be, just start a business and you're the CEO, why not? So what you pay a little bit of taxes, but you work for yourself and you determine your fate a little bit more precise. I'm a, such an advocate of uh, being your own employer. You yourself are your own employer. And there's also many benefits of having your own company. You could talk to your bookkeeper or your more, more important, talk to your accountant about the benefits that are never really expressed. But you went to Harvard Business School, so you know. I went there for negotiations. I only went there for like sales. Like it was a class to get me. It was like, it was like, sem- it, was like a, it was like a semester of like four to four or five months. Yeah, I get it's it. Not like I went there for like the full four years, persuasion. And, and, and then I have like the degree for for just right. the negotiation certification, right. just for that. Well, I don't know anything sales. about that. I'm not a businessman. I've, I'm a terrible businessman. If I make money, I spend it. <laughs> that's that's the problem. How was it like creating courage? You get me, like, because I, I I know when you were younger. You, you you liked comedy and horror a lot, and, and you still like that. I know, I know. What was it like creating courage? I was a blast, man. I had the, I just had a, it was a wonderful experience. Even the ba- even the stuff that doesn't go well, I look about, I look back on it, and it was just gorgeousness. But every day is gorgeousness for me. Every day. I just told you an anecdote where I'm communicating to the moon. 
I'm not mad. I'm nuts. <laughs> I think you bring life to the world. How could I bring any life? I don't bring any life. You know who brings life? Women. And there was a time when God was a woman. Longest time. I mean, this male thing, you know, I feel like I agree with a lot of thinkers that men are simply living out a millennium long inferiority to the goddess. We can't produce life. You talked about bringing life. Women do that. Women bring life. They nurture life too. I'm not saying that they're, they're not capable of destruction. All you have to do is study the mythologies of the world. Possibly the best representative would be Diana or Kali, that's Hindu God. So we've been around a long, 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 long time, Noel. We've done everything. We've invented everything. Anything you need to know, you could always find in the past by our ancestors. But of course, we've entered a new world. Now we've got three minutes left. And technology has never existed at the level that it exists right now. And um, the incredible responsibility for those that control that technology directly impacts our lives and the way we see life. So I don't think I'm giving life. I think I'm just trying to hold on to it. Okay. I have like, we have two minutes left because I know you're That's you're right. your schedule. Okay. So you guys can find John online right here, by the way. His Twitter is at Dillyworth. Awesome. Awesome. Is that true? I don't even know. It's what Twitter said. Twitter could okay. be wrong. I, I just got it from not, your Twitter page. Right. Yeah, we'll go on. Yeah. And then YouTube for Stretch Films. That's right. right. You guys, he has a new film coming out. So if you love the all if you love John, right, and you love his work, seek him online and you can subscribe to a lot of his stuff. And he has new content and creations uh, coming out for us now. Um, so we're very grateful that John's creating that for us in the world, essentially. With his gifts and his talents, and, and we enjoy that a lot. Is that um, a bulletin board? Yes. I, 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 if you could share, you get me, um, like in the last like 60 seconds, you get me like, uh, like something like that is from your, in addition to like a good way to see the world, you get me in somebody just moving to the sea you get me like turtle like what would that be you get me and, and, and them just going all out like just, just for their dreams man so they can be like you you get me like their own way and just and adding to the world like the way you do it, really well i don't know anything about that request noel but this is what i say whenever i conclude an interview a meeting or a broadcast I simply invite everyone to stay animated. All right, guys. Well, we're very grateful to have had John today. Make sure you follow him online. And like John shares, you guys, uh, like ourselves, we stay animated. Uh, always rather. Thank stay you, John. animated. It's up to courage to save his new home. Stupid dog! You made me look bad! <laughs> <laughs>